Okay. All right, let's get started. Okay, uh, Qvert six scale and the latest performance changes and scalability changes. So I'm I'm Ryan Hallisey. I work at NVIDIA, and with me is LA Patel, who also works with me at NVIDIA. Okay, uh, so we're gonna start things off by talking about uh, the the manifesto for six scale. So the direction for this this SIG. And I'm just going to read this to, to define and drive scalability and performance goals within Qvert. And this includes documenting, testing, and measuring performance and scalability for a Qvert release. So that's what we're looking to do within Six Scale. And, and uh, so, I, but I want to define this down a little bit. And so we um, we we look at uh, scale and performance, and, and we we sort of came up with a thesis for for how we should view these things uh, in the context of Qvert. And kind of the way it's summed this up and having the second bullet point here is that it's performance and scale and Qvert is is different than just measuring a hypervisor. And specifically, the way to think about this is that if you were running your own Linux box and you were working with Q, working with Levert and you had a you had KVM and QMU in your local environment and you want to measure performance, it's going to be a lot different than, than well, not a lot different, but it will be a little bit different than if you wanted to to use Qvert and actually measure the scale performance. And the reason being is if you think about your create connection or, or your, your ask to create a VMI, what it has to do, and you think about all the layers it has to go through, and you have Kubernetes in its own layer. We've got a CD, we've got storage, we've got the NSI layer, the, the CNI layer, we've got each Qvert component that uh, communicates with one another, the API, the controller, the handler, and, and of course, the, the launcher. There's a lot of things that that interact and work together to bring you this, this guest. So for our, our thesis is about capturing a, a sort of all of these things together and, and, and trying to look at them in a way that we can that we can capture um, uh, performance and scale for specific portions of, of this and specifically with in, within Qbert. And so the bottom line is that the way we look at this is that scale and performance is, is relative and it's very focused on um, on your individual environment. And so really what we've been trying to do is find ways that we can remove as many variables as we can. And so uh, it's kind of the first way to peel this back is um, here's, here's, uh, here's the hardware we use for our testing uh, and you'll see more about the testing in a few slides later. Uh, just to give you an idea, we have two places we test. We've got shared hardware, we've got dedicated hardware. Um, I, I mean, won't say anything about the specifics other than that, you know, shared hardware is where when we run our jobs, there's also the possibility of some other job that's running in Qubit CI on that hardware. We're dedicated as the, this is the only place we run our, our scale and performance jobs. So a big part of how we actually go about um, learning and, and measuring scale and performance, we have this audit tool. And this, this audit tool, the goal is to um, uh, to, to reveal results and, and so we can analyze and, the, and do analysis. And the critical part of this is actually using Prometheus. We, we have a bunch of metrics that we grab from Prometheus and we export those results and we do our analysis. And this is really valuable that this stuff is in Prometheus because obviously you can use Grafana or any other dashboard that you want to, to look at this data, uh, but it's also great because it integrates with anything. So if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to um, run this on your local, uh, this tool in your local environment, it can very easily do that, do so without impacting any of your workloads. So metrics specifically that we care about is two. Uh, we've got phase transition times, and the think about this is you know when you have a VMI, it goes from pending, scheduling, scheduled, and running. We have uh, the time it takes to to go between each of those phases. That's important to us actually measuring how the control plane, the Qvert control plane, in addition to the Kubernetes, is able to quickly move us between these phases. So we, we measure that very closely. And the second one that's really important is the, the client go HTTP calls that are made to the H, to the Kubernetes API server. It's pretty well known if you've done a, a list in Kubernetes, on a, especially in a large cluster, that it can be slow. And so it's important to know that when we are making HTTP requests that we're being very careful. Um, we, you know, Qvert is, is sort of a guest in the cluster that, you know, there could be someone else that or some other application running, like, 
using this 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 cluster. So we, we want to be a good neighbor, and, and really that's the thing that will um, improve our scale. So being being able to limit the number of calls that we make and be really efficient when we're using the API server. And so what I will highlight in with just this um, with this metric and how how the audit tool can can really provide a lot of value uh, to to viewing scale with this metric is uh, we have a there's there's a bunch of uh, business logic that we've added into the audit tool about uh, based on our learnings for for building the our testing and um, specifically this um, uh, the way we measure is we have this increase function that we use for Prometheus and think of it as like uh, a way to measure a chunk of time, the number of requests, HTTP requests that occur. And uh, so we want to grab those and, and we want to analyze them. And we actually saw during our testing that it didn't quite work the way we expected. And 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 it had to actually have to do with the way Prometheus does increase and, and kind of the way it worked um, in our CI. And so if you're creating a new cluster, we found that you actually have to create a primer VMI for actually correctly using this metric. So ultimately, like in order to do this, um, and the, the term for this is extrapolation and, and, and Prometheus, uh, you have to use the correct methods in order to get the, the right results. And so you can see from our from our tooling and from our testing that we sort of designed it in such a way that that um, out of the box, you'll get um, the, the correct results. Uh, so you don't have to um, go and dig through and, and, and try and figure this out yourself. So it's, it's a tool that you can made ready to use for, for getting scale and performance data. Okay, Ole, you wanna take over? Sure. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for uh, explaining the uh, audit tool. Um, so now I want to um, talk about how uh, we use the audit tool uh, along with the uh, load generator and other set of tools to um, come up with, with some kind of um, jobs. So there are two uh, major kinds of jobs that run uh, in Kubert CI. One is the pre-submit. Um, this, uh, this is an optional job that can run on each pull request. The other is the uh, periodic jobs. So um, these are the jobs that are ran uh, three times uh, daily, uh, one of which is run with the shared um, hardware that Ryan was uh, mentioning. And the other two are actually run in a dedicated, uh, dedicated cluster with, a, with specific hardware. <clears throat> so with these jobs, uh, we will get results as depicted in the picture on the right. So you can see that um, it shows the um, the metric name as keys, uh, and the value uh, for each metric is um, in in that uh, value key. With this, what we could do is we can actually um, measure the uh, performance and and um, plot the performance of a Kubert stack uh, over time. So six scale is uh, working on a set of tools to crunch these, crunch the data from um, these performance jobs. And I want to show uh, some initial results and charts from, from that uh, set of tools uh, next. Next slide, please. So if you look at um, at the charts uh, displayed here, uh, it is a mixture of scatter as well as the line chart. Uh, the scatter chart display uh, results uh, for one particular, so each green dot displays results for one particular uh, run and um, the value corresponds to this metric, which is VMI creation to running uh, P95. The top, uh, chart is for uh, a VMI created by the user. The second chart is for a VMI that is created by the VM controller. So the line uh, in this chart uh, corresponds to weekly averages. So each of the observation is averaged uh, for each week and the dot represents the value of that average. So you can see that for uh, VMI, both VMI uh, created by the user as well as the VM controller, the 
creation to running P95 uh, deteriorated a bit. Uh, and then after uh, four weeks, um, it kind of came back uh, to its um, original performance. So with this visualization, we can actually go look at the uh, set of changes that were that went in uh, in the uh, Kubeword uh, repository and uh, pinpoint what exactly caused uh, the performance to uh, go back. You can see that there is a strong correlation between these two charts. Um, and looking at the dates for the spike up and spike down, there were uh, two uh, changes that, that went in. Uh, one is a set of PRs for uh, limit ranges and one um, set of PR for uh, SECOMP and, and PSA changes. Both of them, the first change went on uh, in the last week of December 2022. And the second change, which improved the performance, went on uh, January 2, 2023. We were actually um, you know, not able to pinpoint what caused it. Uh, but uh, somebody who is more familiar uh, with, with these uh, changes can, can dig into it and understand the exact performance impact of those changes. Um, next slide, please. So um, the last slide showed a uh, performance um, metric, which is time it took for creation for VMI to go into running state from uh, after it was created. Um, the, this slide and the next slide will show uh, some of the scaling behavior. So if you look at the graphs uh, on the right, uh, the first graph shows the number of patch calls made by the KubeWord stack using the audit tool that Ryan was mentioning um, when uh, VMIs are created uh, in the test. So looking at the chart, the number of patch calls stayed relatively flat uh, across the time frame of analysis, whereas in the chart bottom, uh, it shows the patch calls made to a VMI uh, endpoint by the KubeWord stack when creating a virtual machine. So in this case, the virtual machine controller is managing the VMI. And you can see that the number of patch counts uh, actually increased uh, twice during the period of analysis. So this is a powerful tool in uh, understanding how uh, controllers can scale up a so in this case, there were around 100 VMIs created in the test, and the number of patch issued uh, can be, um, the scaling up behavior of the controller can be uh, monitored in this way. So if you look at the uh, changes that went into the KubeWord stack, um, there was a finalizer introduced to better manage uh, the deletion of the VMI after VM has been deleted. Because of that change, uh, an additional patch call was uh, made to the, the VMI, uh, waiting for it to be garbage collected before uh, VM is released. The second spike uh, was due to uh, using controller revisions. Um, VM controller started using controller revisions to um, to manage the VMI, and that caused the second uh, spike in the uh, patch call. So these were these are not bad. These are intended uh, side effects of the behavior we are uh, driving towards. But we want to highlight the uh, uh, the use of these tools. So, for example, if the controller is hot looping, that is creating a lot of um, uh, API calls uh, due to uh, a hot loop, then these visualizations can help our developer uh, find find that out and and uh, you know introspect that. Next slide, please. 
So lastly, I wanted to show the uh, patch count for pod endpoint uh, in the kubebird stack. The left chart shows the patch count if VMI is created directly by the user. The right chart shows the patch count uh, for uh, pod endpoint when uh, VM is created and it manages the VMI. Again, you can see a strong correlation, correlation in both these graphs. Um, if, if we were to look at the changes, there was a change introduced during this time frame, which keeps uh, the labels on the uh, VMI in sync uh, with, with a set of labels we want. Um, that added uh, an additional uh, patch call, which drove the um, the spike in the, the patch calls for VMIs for both of these uh, uh, VM management methods. So again, I wanted to um, share this so that vendors can use these tools to first um, look at these performance numbers as baseline for this particular uh, hardware and this particular set of uh, tests. Uh, second, it also helps uh, developers to um, understand the performance impact of, uh, of their changes that is going in. And third, uh, it helps us uh, publish some good um, uh, scaling and performance numbers uh, during each releases. So next slide, please. All of these are uh, tools that are work in progress. Um, we do want to add some enhancements here. Um, there are more metrics that can be collected uh, memory usage, CPU usage of the KubeWord stack, all of those metrics can be collected and plotted um, similarly. Second, we want to enhance uh, some of the tests we have. So the uh, the results that uh, that were displayed today were just from the uh, uh, performance periodic job. Uh, that creates uh, bursts in the uh, traffic. So 100 VMIs are created at a burst. We don't have a steady state test currently. So we don't have a case where let's say 200 VMs are created and then um, 20 VMs are deleted at some point in time and then uh, recreated. So we don't have that behavior. It can be added and it can give valuable insights. Then there is some work um, that six scale is looking into with a related uh, Kubernetes project called KWOK. It's a project that allows for um, creating fake node, node objects in the clusters in which um, fake pods can run. So if fake node and fake pods can run, then we can also have a uh, fake VMIs, uh, which will allow us to scale up the number of objects uh, in a cost-effective way. Finally, all of these changes will give us a lot of data uh, in, in the way uh, in which KubeWorks performance and scaling behavior is increasing or decreasing. So we need to mine those uh, results and find uh, correlating trends. Um, so another set of work is to, um, uh, to mine those uh, results and develop a set of tools for correlating trends. So that's it. Um, if, if these kinds of work excite you, um, we encourage you to join uh, six scale um, and, and you know um, share, share your uh, performance journey with us. That's it. Thank you. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. So for Alexander, have we ever done any benchmarking on other related projects like SSP and CDI? Uh, no, at least not to my knowledge, uh, we have not. Lee said, uh, 
I added an instance type pin and preference test a while ago. I've not reviewed it recently, but I assume it's still tracking raw VM VMI numbers are. Yeah, it is Lee. Um, the uh, the data that you saw there that Lee showed for for VMs is is from your test. Yeah, thanks for doing that. That was a great addition. All right, it looks like people were enjoying your presentation and paying attention. Thank you guys for the questions. Um, if there are more, we have time for them. And I'm sure our presenters would love to share. That was some good detail. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I was curious, as far as SIG scale goes, I know that you guys have been running uh, for a little while now. Um, is there still any specific type of growth or um, goals that you're hoping for for the SIG in, in the near and maybe distant future? Sure. Yeah, I think um, I think one of the, the goals at the forefront now has been um, is really when thinking about um, releases, having having scale or performance data that we can post per release it's been it's been something that we've thought about for a little while and we've been sort of marching towards but i think you know with with a lot of the graphs that la was showing it's we have really taken a big step into actually showing that and, and having something that um, that we can show so like you know when we say v1 is released we can maybe take an estimate of like here's what you know here's what we expect that we can you know scale to given our um, our hardware and, and and here's what we can expect for performance and, and, and things like that. That's That's been something that's, uh, that we'd like to see. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious if, say, I am promoting Kubert to someone else who maybe is our using VMware or not to point fingers, but like just any other general uh, virtualization platform, not performance things don't always translate one to one. Are there any, like, what of the things that you guys have been doing in the SIG translate to comparisons into onto other platforms and making decisions for adoption and things like that? So I, I let me see. So I think, um, well, it's difficult because, like we were saying, as part of our thesis, is we we look at kind of look at the whole picture of. Uh, Kubernetes and, and a bunch of the other components that are sort of in the mix. And and so we've been, as part of our work, we've been really trying to peel back the onion and, and reduce the number of variables. And and so like kind of the way to think about it is like we look at just the the Kubert control plane and we really want to isolate it and say like, okay, this is something that we can improve, like this PR, we want to get to a point where we say this PR improved scaling or performance in the Kubert control plane. And then, and then, you know, then there's also the aspect of this where like, uh, we've had a lot of questions of like, well, how do we improve networking um, performance? Or how do we, how do we look at the guests and, and try and, you know, improve the interaction between when we start the front launcher and actually get the domain and, um, and, and, you know, at different scales and, and different, you know, footprints and instance types and so on. So I, it's sort of like, it's, a, it's a hard question to answer because it's sort of, um, it's a very different pra platform and sort of different way to look at it and so it, yep. makes it, it makes it hard to to always say like oh this is exactly like some other product uh, because of the number of variables and sort of if you were to think about like the number of area like if you made just one create call exactly every jump you have to make is going to be a lot different than when you would be in VMware or some other, some other product and so isolating that and, and trying to find get the best out of what we have is sort of it's been our approach right that finesse yeah, is definitely would, a big part of it. Go ahead. Yeah, I would like to add to that. And and so kind of if we um, isolate all the variables, our, our side goal is to say, okay, for this release, um, with, with these charts, uh, you know, with all the core changes that are going in, this is how the performance was impacted, right? So because we keep the hardware and the um, configuration of the test same. The only thing that changed was the code 
So you can figure out how um, code changes are causing performance to go up and go down. Um, so it's kind of not um, comparing with the uh, different product, but it's comparing with Kubeport of the past uh, and seeing how we are evolving um, as project. Yeah, and seeing that uh, baked into release of uh, information at some point will definitely be a, a fun thing to achieve.